Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I know my last Magic of DK video, I said that was going to be the last one. Sorry guys, I lied. I figured it's getting into the Mark Arth patch. And I've tried literally every Magic of DK build you can imagine. Always from Cedar's Crest to Heavy Attack builds. Everything and anything in between. I've spent millions of gold and hundreds of hours per perfecting the magic of dk build and this is what i come up with i really hope you guys enjoy i'll have timestamps to all the good shit either up here up here down there i don't know this is taking the basis of my tempest build that i made in like a month and a half ago i'll leave a link to that down in the description so without further ado let's get right into it so character sheet doesn't look like it's uh too impressive but trust me it is everything fully buffed just so you guys have uh, some poor re reference uh, 3k spell damage, 37,000 Mask of Magicka, over sustaining a Magicka recovery. Atro, Mundus, Bewitch, Sugar Skulls for the food. You can either run Breton, High Elf, or Dark Elf, really doesn't matter for your race. Uh, the difference is negligible. Go ahead and hop into the sets. The very first set we're running is Elf Bane. We're running this a little bit differently than the Tempest build. Like I said, if you guys haven't checked that out, I go much more in depth. I'll leave a link to that down below. So, running Elf Bane on the front bar only, running Overwhelming on the back bar, running Grothgar as a set, running Trainee as a one piece, and then last but not least, running Malak as a band. I'll go over why everything's set up the way it is. So, instead of running the Disease enchantment, we are running the Poison instead. The reason we're running the Poison is because it double dips, so not only are you getting added benefits from the Combustion Passive from applying Burning for having Charge stats effect increase but when you apply these poison you also get stamina back so it kind of double dips it kind of does the same thing as befouled but uh, you get a little bit of extra out of it back bar running a resto staff resto staff is in my opinion the best um i tried Sir uh crest of Sirda, which is very popular sword and board builds but the thing about the sword and board builds is if you go against any heavy dot build you're just fucked as soon as you get off your back bar this build covers literally everything and everything that can be tossed you in Cyrodiil I'll go over the skills that kind of make this so anything you can think of guys this build takes care of I promise you I've spent like I said hundreds of hours and millions of gold perfecting this and this is as good as I can get it back bar I have a weapon damage glyph this keeps our healings up and also when we swap to our front bar we'll have the added spell damage for our burst Grothgar running a 5 1 1 setup to maximize our Undaunted. Ideally, uh, you'll want your big pieces obviously be heavy to get more armor out of those. So, here's the traits. I have a little bit of everything. The traits really don't mean all too much. It really depends on your playstyle. I like to do a little bit of everything. I block a little bit. I roll dodge a little bit. So, I just have a little bit of everything. You can kind of uh, change these how you want, but the rest of the build kind of remains the same. So, we got two reduced costs. Doesn't matter where you put them, and I have one spell damage. This is perfect. I've optimized this as much as possible. If you put any more sustain on this, you're losing damage, you know, vice versa. Trust me, run two reduced cost and spell damage as long as you're running the Astro Mundus. Trust me on this. Now, getting into the skills, the bar is going to look kind of funky. I know we're running a Destro Staff, but we're not running Ellie Drain. 90% of the time, I would say, Ellie Drain is just a wasted slot on my bar. Very rarely am I ever against just one other opponent. And usually that opponent some, has some kind of cleanse, so Ellie Drain is completely useless to me. I'm usually against two or three people at a time. I really don't want to waste a global cooldown on Ellie Drain when I could be using something like Talons or Engulfing Flames or Burning Embers. So with that being said, we have Engulfing Flames buffed up. This goes up 9%. We cannot hit the 10%, but it's not that big a deal. Next is Fossilized absolutely necessary elf bane bolsters burning talons not only does it bolster burning talons as you guys know it bolsters uh grothgar gives it 100 percent uptime as long as you proc it on your front bar it's very easy to keep track of that with just simple uh cooldown add-ons very very simple so proc on your front bar not your back bar if it procs on your back bar it's not the end of the world it's no big deal Talons by itself is probably one of the best skills or best skills in the kit that the DK has. It's very underrated. Um, even if Groth even if Elpane did not elongate Grothgar, I would run just for the Talons. Your hardest hitting dot, it's an AoE, it's an immobilization. 
it's so so good and especially in your group play you have the synergy there this shit is amazing i absolutely love it flame lash you can try running molten whip but i rather really have the healing on the front bar to keep up our aggression as you guys know if you play magic of dk in open world as soon as you get on your back bar it's very difficult to get off of it so it's very important for you to maintain a very aggressive proactive play style and having a bunch of heals on your back bar that transfer to your front bar really helps with that. We'll go to the back bar in just a second. I'll show you what I mean. We have burning embers. Keep this up on as many people as possible. One more thing to note about why elf is so good. It more than doubles the effect of the burning stats effect. Now the burning stats effect hits about as hard as the burning embers. Just keep that in mind. Ferocious Leap. This is our gap closer. Does huge bursts of damage. CC gives his shield an absolute must, in my opinion. If you try to run standard, anyone with two brain cells is just gonna roll dodge out of it, so it's kind of, kind of dumb. Cauterize on the back bar. This gives us crit on the back bar, even though we're running Malakanth Band, we can still crit heal, which is very, very good since our crit is intrinsically low from running heavy armor. This gives us a pretty good little burst heal too. It's very cheap, coagulating blood. Uh, gives us our uh, health recovery and this our oh shit button is actually a pretty decent hill now rapid regeneration this goes up to about 21,000 over five seconds when it's procced uh, with your spell power buff and such also armor an absolute must dragon fire scale this is a flex spot depending on what potions you want to run you can change this so boil down to do I want to run like entropy or do I want to run wings well the reason I have this back bar set up the way it is, no matter what build you encounter, you're going to have a counter to it. If it's snipe spammers or overload sorks, it does not matter. You have skills for that. If it's a super heavy dot intensive build, you have rapid regeneration and you have cauterize for that. And if it's a super bursty build, you know, obviously like a like a night blade or a spin to wind stam sork or stam crow. You need to get out of the red quick, otherwise you're going to execute it down. You have coagulating blood and burning embers for that so no matter what situation you're going to run into you're going to have an answer to it last but not least temporal guard uh, gives us a uh, minor protection on back bar is nerfed a little bit this patch but it is what it is it's still uh, really really good now uh, some math for you guys if you run entropy on this build um, you get the major sorcery but that only equates to 6.6 percent more damage so you have to kind of think in your head, is the 6.6% more damage worth the trade-off of having wings, which mitigates all projectile damage by 50% and hits people with the flames of oblivion proc every half second, essentially. So um, it's kind of up to you on that one, but I highly suggest running this on the back bar. And another thing, all of the restoration passives stack wonderfully with heavy armor, especially the, uh, the heavy attack. If you're ever in a pinch and you need to get resources back fast, it only takes you like a second and a half to channel a heavy attack on the resto. You get a lot more back just because it is heavy armor. And in addition, it gives you major mending as well. So um, compare that to the sword and board, you get a little bit of block mitigation. You know, whatever. As soon as you go to your front bar, you can get melted anyway. So this is why I have it like this. Cauterize transfers to the front bar. Rapid regen transfers to the front bar. Dragonfire scale transfers to the front bar you guys get the trend right you pop all your shit on your back bar and this gives you like four seconds of pound town time on your front bar you can set up your whole combo you can set up your talons when they try to talons you know roll dodge you hit them with engulfing flames in the middle of the roll dodge you're going to fossilize burning embers leap you can do all that in about four seconds so buff up you got about four seconds of pound town back bar buff up again four seconds a pound you get the you get the drift. you know there, there's a system to it um of course all the good passives not really gonna go over all that stuff just keep this video short and sweet potions are running this is very important uh, depending on what abilities you want to run on your bar potions will dictate kind of what you want to do if you're just chilling use that line spell droughts or you don't have a lot of gold these pretty much complete the build yeah you don't benefit from the crit, but you benefit from everything else, right? So you get the major sorcery and the, uh, uh, whatever the other one is. You get the spell damage, you get the recovery, whatever. Essence of detection is why I use regularly. Uh, same thing as the Lion Spell Drow. Instead of the crit, you get detection for Nine Blades, which is invaluable. Everyone should have these. Now, these next two potions are very expensive. Obviously, Tripos is the third. You can run Tripos in this build as well. Uh, this potion right here, this Essence of Magicka, 
Um, it gives you minor heroism, major endurance, major intellect recoveries. Essentially, it's a tripod, but instead of getting the health back, you get minor heroism for a very long time. And this helps with your sustain a lot if you can afford it. Uh, in order to make this, you need Dragons of Blood, Dragons Rim, and Columbine, or the three. It's not too expensive, but it is a little pricey. Now, you guys know DK lacks mobility. That's everyone knows that. This makes up for that. But the problem is, this is the most expensive potion in the game, so I would not suggest just popping these like candy regularly. If you're really sweating and you really want to get the clips, this is why I would run. It gives you major expedition, gives you major vitality, and it gives you minor heroism. Um, the major expedition obviously helps with the mobility aspect of the DK, which completely rounds out this build 100% perfect. Uh, major vitality, all obviously with the healing, the minor heroism is by far the best effect that you can have on a DK at any given time, just because of the battle war passive alone. And if you're really in trouble, like just needing to survive, you can you run uh, essence of lingering health. Uh, that's entirely up to you as well. So that does it for the potions, the build, the beginning summary sheets, and we're gonna hop right into the CP. So we get this over with, fellas. Don't want you to be here any longer than, uh, than you want to. I think I only have like a four minute average view duration on the videos. So I'm not going to talk through these. You guys can pause the video and play it back. Um, the only thing to note is that you do need 75 in the Thaumaturge to get your exploiter passive. Um, the rest are pretty obvious. Um, you don't have to have the points in I do. Keep in mind you're going to have 16 to 17 more points in each street than I do because I'm not max CP on this account. That's okay. So that's the build guys and like I said I've spent millions of gold, hundreds and hundreds of hours on this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this just a little mini clip at the beginning. I'll get better about doing that actually putting clips in the beginning just to kind of keep you guys attention. So with all that being said thank you guys for your support joining on the streams and check it out my channel um i promise when the contents will progressively get better i want to invest a lot more time in the youtube um about 75 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed so do your boy horcrux a favor and subscribe if you don't like the content or you get it over later you can always unsubscribe it's just a click away um really helped the channel a lot and keeps me motivated so with all that being said not sure when this will be uploaded you guys have a good night or have a good morning and this has been Horcrux. Deuces.